Okay, um, welcome back. And uh, now uh, for Professor Takenagi's uh, final lecture. Thank you very much. So now I'd like to continue working on the uh, excited state. And my last lecture, what basically we did is like this. We have some conformal field theory, and we pick up some particular region, which is called which subsystem A, and we trace out the other part. This is we, we define this entanglement SA, and we computed this entanglement entropy for ground state. Just we just write it zero, and also we compute this ground state wave function. Maybe we can write it psi zero. This is a ground state, and we compute. Also, we are interested in uh, excited state, so we just compute this entropy for excited state and take the difference. This is the excited state. And we call delta SA. And the nice thing of this quantity is that both guys uh, have a UV divergence, which is proportional to area of divergence, but they cancel out. And this is a finite quantity. And we evaluated this in holographic way and confirmed that, especially if this length scale of subsystem A is like this energy, this energy density, TTT, and multiplied L to D plus 1, this becomes uh, this D dimension. Space dimension D plus 1, that means we are talking about C, D plus 1 dimensional conformal field theory. Then dimension is dimensionless. And as long as this is much smaller than 1, or actually order N square, what we find is that some analog of first law of thermodynamics is somehow holds in this case, like this. Uh, maybe I, I just put it, effect, this is some effective temperature, and delta Ea. Delta Ea is just an energy, excited energy inside this region, eh? just the integral of excited energy in this region. And effective temperature turns out to be rather universal shape. It's rather completely different from the standard temperature, but it's really a geometrical quantity, which looks like 1 over L, so because of dimensional reason, and some co constant. Okay, so there is some constant, but this constant turns out to be some universal quantity. Universal in that it doesn't, it, it, this constant depends on the choice of a subsystem, maybe like this or elliptic or it depends on this kind of shape of A, but it does not depend on the parameter of the theory, like coupling constant or uh, rank of gauge group. So in this sense, some rather universal result. And uh, if we, for example, because some conformal field theory, especially in 2D, so the basic, if we talk about some operator, so basic quantity of operator is its energy, roughly it is a conformal dimension. And indeed, if we try to compactify the system, essentially energy is a conformal dimension. Compactified space its energy is conformal dimension. So this means that entanglement entropy is directly related to conformal dimension. So this is a universal uh, formula. It's a, in that sense, interesting. But uh, we just get something we know. So conformal dimension we know very well. And we actually, entanglement entropy reduced to some, some quantity we know very well. Uh, yeah, because we have conformal maps. Uh, Talk about the cylinder, the energy is conformal. Uh, 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 that's it, yeah. So, and the, so the opposite is in that sense. So, what happens if we take, we don't assume this limit? And in generic situation, it's of course it's quite difficult to tolerate. Uh, yes? Universal, but uh, in what sense it is universal? Because I can only compute for some geometry and some, uh, some shapes, right? Yeah, I mean, I mean, any geometry, you have some constant, which is only determined from uh, geometrical reason. Like some, some, I don't know the exact detail, but somehow if you have some this kind of shape, this geometry have some one quantity, which we call C, constant. And this quantity doesn't depend on any coupling constant or such a rank of gauge group and so on. In that sense, I'm calling it. It's a, we don't, this quantity doesn't depend on the conformal field theory detail. No, no, no. no. So this is just a constant, order one constant. It's not related to conformal. So we'd like to take some opposite limit, which means that it's a, this subsystem A is very, very big. And maximally, we assume maximally big case. That is, a, we talk about conformal field theory in D plus 1. We have a one time on D space. 
So this space is Rd in that sense, and we just cut it into half, A and B. Uh, for, we are talking about a pure state, just one single state, always SA equals B is true. So maximum size is actually half of the total space. So we are looking at, we would like to focus on this particular case and compute this entanglement entropy for excited state. This is a, a main topic I'm going to talk here. And this uh, uh, is, uh, ah, okay, turn, yeah. Sorry, I now switch to the, ah, switch, yeah, yeah, switch to this transparency. And uh, so this is mainly uh, based on the, this work is based on the collaboration with Nozaki and Masawa. And uh, so we submitted this archive this year, just a few weeks ago. And this is a large subsystem limit of entanglement entropy, which I explained here. And in this case, we don't expect any universal properties. Instead, it depends on detail of the theory. So if we change the theory, the result is completely changes, and so on. So in that sense, it's a holographic uh, calculation, not so much useful in that we don't get uh, some universal results. So we are looking at, we are going to look at the solvable expressed example from the viewpoint of field theory analysis. So this is purely field theory analysis, and we don't use any uh, holography. Now, yes? Ah, uh, why we don't expect, you mean? Ah, so in a, this is actually obvious in um, holographic description, so we have some boundary here, and we have some anti doshita space. But if we have some detail, I mean, change the details, we have a different infrared geometry. But uh, indeed, if we compute this area, this uh, minimum surface extended really in the infrared because this size is very big. So the result really depends on this infrared geometry. So uh, yeah, that's, that's a thing that we, we don't get some universal result. Ah, yeah. uh, when you say that uh, the IR geometry plays important role and you don't, uh, I mean, you, you want to study it from the field theory side, do you mean that we don't know what is the IR in that case we are studying uh, it no, from no, field I, theory? Yeah, no, no, I, I don't mean that. But if you, for example, you can take some particular geometry, confined geometry or a black hole geometry, you can explicitly compute this quantity. For that, I'd like to understand the basic aspect of this quantity, then it is, I mean, direct to look at the expressed field theory. And then we find some result, and then we have some understanding, and then we can come back to the holography. Uh, but the, today's my uh, lecture is only for this field theory, the premium, preliminary stage in that sense. So I, I cannot tell you the whole story. I just compute this quantity for massless free field theory, but still we get some interesting result. That's a first step to understand this uh, calculation. So we will focus on exactly this quantity, or more precisely this one. So we, comp we define some excited state by acting some local operator, which we call OX. Any operator is fine. Local operator is fine. And uh, we act this operator on vacuum, conform a few theory vacuum. And, uh, so far, it's uh, quite general. And we compute this entanglement entropy for this excited state, and minus just vacuum entanglement entropy. Again, this uh, cancels out this area of divergence. So we def this we def define delta SA, but this n this uh, uh, n means that the positive integer one two three. This n is is a, an index of this Lenny entropy. So this a, SA means that the entanglement n Lenny entropy, which I defined previous lecture, and for this excited state. But if we take n goes to one, this just reduces the entanglement entropy. But actually, for our purpose, actually, it is quite useful to look at all quantity about all n. Indeed, we can compute this quantity for all, all n if we talk about free field theory. So this is our assumption. So this is the definition. So now we use the uh, replica method, which I explained previously, so to compute this entanglement entropy for excited state. So, but anyway, we first start with the uh, density matrix, which we choose. So in the end, we want to compute trace row A to n, this power, and take derivative about n, and we get the entanglement entropy. Or just we keep this quantity and compute this Lenny entropy. But anyway, so the density matrix or a wave, that's some wave function of the system, this pure state, is given by this. So we have a local operator acted on vacuum state. 
And basically, we take some time evolution. We are interested in time evolution of this state. It, we have a non-trivial time evolution. So exponential IHT. But uh, we put some regularization. So this regularization is to regularize some behavior of this operator OX. OX is quite local operator. So it suddenly excites some local region, but we slightly smear it out. So this uh, smearing parameter is epsilon. But in the end, we take epsilon goes to zero, final calculation. But here, I just we keep it to, to, to avoid some confusing aspect. So we have this uh, state, and this is a brand, okay? just this a pure state uh, with time evolution. And we can rely to this in this way. So this is now we use the language of Euclidean field theory. So we just uh, to compute the entanglement entropy, which is quite useful to fast work in uh, Euclidean uh, calculation, Euclidean field theory, and uh, finally analytically continue to this real time evolution. This is quite a uh, standard way to analyze this entropy. And so this is UV, epsilon UV cut. So this is a setup for which we work with, and we trace out, formally we trace out Hilbert space for B, and we define rho A, which is time dependent, like this, and also X, de X dependent. X is a location where we insert this operator, like, uh, so the, there are two parameters, so we have to add some operator, this OX, at this point, this distance is X, but maybe I just call it L, so that a, this X di direction, and we just take X equal to minus L at this point, and also this is time, this is real time evolution. And there are two parameters of this entropy. So this is a definition, and we just want to press out region B and compute this entropy. So for that, we can use this path integral formalism, which I explained before. So this is a very simple thing we do. Just we, for example, if we're looking at the state, vacuum state acting, acted by this local operator, uh, so we, in a vacuum state, is described by path integral from minus infinity to some t equals zero. This is already, this is a path integral form, or hartle hawking wave function. But uh, we just add this operator, that means we just in, insert this operator at this point. This is the state and opposite state. It's a dual state, it's like this, vacuum and O. Again, we can just pass integral from minus, plus infinity to zero, and we insert some operator at one point. This is quite uh, simple. So we can realize these states, and if we are interested in this overlap of them, they just test with each other along this t equals zero, a tau equals zero, and just compute this partial function. But we are interested in entanglement entropy. We need to do a little bit more complicated. So as before, a replica method means that we have a, we are interested in trace row a n, row a to the n. That means we have n, of n of multiple seat of each theory, n copies, n replicas of the theory. And we have some region A here. And this is Euclidean time is in this direction. And this is space direction. And we, we have region A. And the opposite one is a region B. And we, we paste this lower part of this A is upper part of A and the opposite seat, next to seat. Spiral structure, if we go this way, it's go, going around this point, uh, this cut, end of cut, and going to another seat, and so on. This spiral structure. And then we insert these operators. So as I already explained, so this is a blood state and keto state. We insert each operator, each operator, and so on. So this is a very simple procedure. But in the end, what we get is like this. So log, log is because of, uh, Leni, this is Leni entropy. So it's, we take log of trace. Uh, maybe I should write it here again. So Leni entropy was the 1 minus n and log of trace log a to n. This is a, it's a n. We just compute this. And so this is log, and we subtract this one, but this is a, a, because of normalization of this density matrix. Trace of density matrix should be normalized to be one, so we subtract this. And uh, this automatically also subtracts this ground state part, because we define this correlation function so that it normalizes this correlation function so that if we have one, here it's just one. So this subtracts a ground state contribution. So we only have major the effect of when we have non-trivial effect when we put this operator O. So this is a, a explicit result. And we just need to calculate this correlation function. But this is two endpoint functions. In general, it's difficult, very difficult to perform explicitly. But in free field theory, we can do this. So this is a basic thing we would like to do. But there are one more 
complicated point is that now we are looking at the two point function and we, we can apply some weak contraction. But uh, this two point function is green function, not on the standard flat space, but uh, it's like some n-seated surface. It's a bit complicated. But in this case, we just have a one single single point, single singular point, has uh, some uh, conical deficit point. And then going around this point, we have actually two pi n instead of two, two pi. So the calculation is actually possible in green function. There are a lot of literature uh, in that calculation. So we focus on the free massless scalar field theory in D plus one dimension, this space just massless scalar field theory Lagrangian. And we compute this green function, just two point function. Then we find get this kind of result. One way to get this result is the sum over n different uh, mirror, mirror copies of the uh, source. We can just sum over this different seeds. Then we get, in the end, we get this kind of formula. It looks a little bit complicated, but, uh, but still we can easily handle this. This is a result for, I didn't write it, so, but this is a four, uh, four dimension, d equals three case, totally four dimensional result. And, uh, but uh, other dimension, it sometimes it, it, it gets more complicated. But just, uh, I, I show this as some example. And A is defined by basically this R and Y. R, X, uh, X direction, we have some, um, so we define the coordinate like this. So this coordinate only, we write manifestly two dimensions. It's tau and uh, X. And we have this tau and X and also some other coordinates which I write it with vector X. So this vector x is this direction, the separation in that direction. And uh, r and s is a polar coordinate of this guy. So we have tau plus i x equal to r to exponential i theta, like this. And, and the way we can define radial coordinate and the angle coordinate. So this is a, a setup uh, which we compute. Anyway, we know this, we, we put in that this local operator here two local operators, then we can compute this uh, green function, two-point function, in, by using this formula. Yes? Ah, yes, G, a green function. Ah, sorry, this is two-point function. That's the same thing. Ah. ah, so the N means uh, we are computing uh, sigma N, N seated Riemann surface. So that means this angle is two pi N. Uh. Sorry, I just didn't. So this spiral seat, we have the spiral seat and compute this two-point function, and we get this result. And uh, then we, we, we can do this result to, you know, do some weak contraction. We, we need to end, roughly end copy of this green function to compute this two n function. And especially, uh, so we, but we didn't specify this operator O here, and we especially take this operator O to be this simply just some power of the scalar field. This phi is the scalar field and some power of this integer power, some phi to k, to the k power. And then we do, of course, it's a normal, a normal order, take normal order of this. So let's try this very simplest operator and see what happens. So and we, we did this calculation in explicitly. And uh, so we give some summary of this result. So the calculation is just elementary. You can just do this, you know, use this green function and evaluate it. And the not trivial thing is in the end, we do this kind of analytical continuation to real time. And we extract some time evolution. So our time evolution looks like this. This is an increment, this delta S versus time. And especially we are, just for presentation reason, we choose this N equal to two, second range entropy. And especially the simplest operator, O is just phi. This goes from k equal one. Then it shows this kind of monotonic increasing uh, property of entanglement entropy. So this is a time, and until time reaches L, L is a distance. This uh, distance between this local operator and this uh, entangling region, the boundary of A. So up to this point, up to t equal L, it's always vanishing, but at this point, suddenly increases. In 2D, it's really step functional. On a higher dimension, it's slightly more uh, smooth uh, function. So, but this, uh, this kind of uh, qualitative uh, behavior is very easy to understand from this uh, picture. <coughs> so we, <coughs> we excite this point. 
So we put the local operator. That means we create some entangling pairs. We create actually a lot of create, uh, entangling pairs. And each pair, this is a relativistic theory, massless theory, propagates at the speed of light in any direction. In 2D, this is very special in that this is A and B. Uh, so this is A and B. And if we put this particle here, in 2D, it just go left and right. There are only two directions. One of them, one entangled pair comes into this region B. At really, this length is L. So at t equal L, indeed, this one, one particle, one pair, entangled pair, reaches this boundary. So that time, exactly, we have this step functional behavior. And now, one of them is in B, and the other one is going opposite side and still A. So A and B is entangled by this entangled pair. So this manifestly shows up this behavior, and it's quite intuitive to understand this result. In higher dimension, slightly more complicated situation, because this entangled pair can move in any dimension. So minimum time, which reaches this boundary and get into B, so this is a length L. Indeed, that's the reason why we have this non-trivial you know, increasing happens at t equal L. But it's gradually because some of the signal are going the different direction and takes a longer time until you reach this boundary. So in this way, we get this. Yes? Yes. Uh, only one operator. Sorry, we are just only, so this is two, but this is because we are talking about density matrix. So the reason we have two copy is because we are talking about this density matrix. So we have one operator. For state, we just want one operator, but we always combined with, <laughs> sorry, yeah. So this looks two, but actually this means you just. Yeah, but uh, I, I mean, uh, it depends on the uh, operator, but uh, okay, so I mean, simply, so if, if we act this operator phi, actually I come back to this point, very important later, but we can just decompose this left and right. That means if we act this operator to vacuum, then we have, I mean, phi L, so we have some phi L state and the vacuum of light moving plus and R and yeah, left, uh, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. And indeed, uh, this actually already answered. This ma maximum, we are interested in the later time value. And as you can see, this is 0 0.6 and 0 0.8. This is actually log 2. Indeed, exactly this, uh, because of this uh, kind of EPR state, as I'll come back to this point later. And uh, in a real time evolution looks like very simple. For example, in 4D, it's like this log of 2t squared divided by T squared. So it's like some, initially it's like log, but in the end, it approaches constant. And in the, this function just to uh, describe here, we have some operator here, and at some, at t equals zero, we excite this point, that means we create an entangled pair, and each of them is uh, traveled in the opposite way at the speed of light. So at t equals zero, it reaches, so from that we have non-trivial behavior. And also from this picture that once we, one of the pair gets into this, region A, uh, sorry, A and B is slightly opposite, but I just forget about it, it's because it's uh, SA and SB. So once we reach, one of the pair reaches there, it never go back. In that sense, this monotonicity is quite natural. Even though we only confirm this conjecture in a preview theory, but probably we expect this is true in strongly coupled theory. Maybe holography is quite interesting to look at. Uh, sorry, you, you could, yeah, yeah, you, you can, uh, so that is, uh, we subtract it already. We, we, yeah, we, we said this is zero, so we subtract always this uh, vacuum contribution, which has an area of divergence, it's, of course, it's quite non-trivial, but we just subtract this effect. But you said this comes to the Yeah, yeah, this is, yeah, exactly. We just compute the uh, entropy for this state, precisely this state, uh, this state, uh, and follow some time evolution. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so 
So uh, we, we can repeat this kind of analysis in higher order, and we get this uh, result which is written here. <laughs> so, um, so this is a, so we, we computed Rainier entropy, an increment of Rainier entropy and a final value. We don't care the detail of time, I, I mean this evolution, just we are looking at the final value. And then, and we take this O to phi to the k power, and we are assuming, so two dimension actually subtle, so I'll come back to this. But actually easier, but we come back to this, but just assume total dimension, including time is greater than two, that means three, four, and that dimension. Then the result looks like this, and this delta n, and this is a n, n the Lenny entropy, n, n equal second Lenny entropy, third Lenny entropy, and the y means it's exactly entanglement entropy. So we have, but uh, for example, for phi, phi operator has already uh, plotted. Everyone goes to the, any, in any dimension, it goes, approaches the same value, which is log two. So that we can easily claim that this state should be equivalent to EPR state. But, uh, but if we go higher order, it's not true. So it's more complicated. But there are nice property that log of some fractional number. That suggests some, uh, it, some, I mean, nice interpretation in terms of finite number of states. I, I will come back to this. But if once we understand this rule, we can actually uh, uh, identify the all of the uh, gener general formula for any value of uh, k and n. And this uh, C is just combination, just familiar quantity. And this only combinatorics appears. That I would like to come back next. So, but the, before that, I just look at the simplest examples. So we look at this one, k equal one, first. Then everything, every entropy, any Lenny entropy goes to log n. This means that reduced density matrix always take this form. This is just a two dimensional maximally entangled state. So one half and one half. But this is obvious, but then we can little bit increase number. So we call the k to k equal two, that means phi square operator. If we try phi square operator, it's like log eight over three, and it looks complicated. But uh, uh, if we little bit think about this, then we can identify the justice matrix should be like this. One half and one four, four. I and mean, it looks like some, there are some simple rules behind that. And indeed, this can be actually understood by roughly this kind of argument. So even for this dimension, anyway, so we, we just divide total space into two parts left part and right part. And just we can dis only discare that the particle is, whether particle is in left or right, it's just two bit, uh, just one bit information, just log two information. And so, and, uh, we, this is a relativistic theory, we can decompose this field into right, left moving. Left moving just go this way or this way or anything. Anyway, so direction is just overlap with this field, eh? And the other is B, just left and right. We decompose this way. Then we, anyway, we look at the phi to nth power. This is our state we are looking at. We multiply this, and we just decompose by just using combination factor. Then we find this summation. It's very simple uh, result. But uh, of course, we have to somehow normalize the state so that, uh, I, I mean, it's, it's a, a unit vector. Then we have this, we can easily show that this is a square root. It becomes square root of combination. So in that way, and we can actually compute this entanglement entropy by looking at this finite number of states. It's just this j runs from zero to k, because just number part, number of these particles. So whether, so the phi to k that means ma maximum number is actually k. Ah, sorry, this is not the end, but it's k. This is my mistake. So zero one to k. So it's just, just finite number of entanglement. And if we look at this formula, then we can immediately identify that to, I mean, this reduced density matrix is simply takes this form, two to minus k, and this is some combination. By using that, we can compute this uh, cost linear entropy, and uh, also taking the limit, we, we can compute entanglement entropy. So it, no, uh, uh, no, no, no. Uh, it's because this argument is not, we don't care the dimension. Uh, uh. No, no, no. Uh, uh, uh. Ah, sorry. Yes, yes. Yeah. So, and in that sense, it's, we have a quite rigid number, but uh, this is only true at later time. And in the, 
I mean, details of the time evolution, we don't know much, so much sure about it. Uh, so we need a detailed calculation. But uh, at the same time, this, uh, this rigid result shows that this delta S increasing increment of entanglement to be sort of topological invariant. This topological entanglement means, uh, in the following sense, so, so we have some, we excite this particle here, but we can, uh, we can modify the shape of subsystem a little bit. But uh, as long as they are cover the half of the total space time, almost half of the space time, results should not change. This maximum value, maybe so this time evolution shows a non-trivial increment, maybe it's in, maybe increasing, but it's maybe non-trivial increasing, but uh, the final value should be stable against this small deformation. As long as, but if we, of course, consider some region A, it's like which, it, of course, it's a bit different result, should be different result, but some of the particles pass through. But as long as it, it covers the really half of the space time, the results should be stable against that. So this is a rather toy example, but this shows that this, uh, how this, uh, I mean, large subsystem size entanglement that we behave. It looks totally different from what we have seen for small subsystem, which result is proportional to entropy. But uh, of course, this entropy is totally, uh, uh, this uh, relation to this result to entropy is not, uh, there are no direct relation between them. Yeah, yeah, right, right. right. In, in the end, in the end, in the end. So this time evolution is, in the end we get some time independent result. Uh, so we are looking at this quantity. Mm. I mean, e equation for delta S M is. Ah, okay. Ah, no, no, ah, no, no. Uh, maybe the previous one, right? That's what uh, I talked the previous. Yeah, one. yeah this probably this one, I think. This yeah. one. But this is, doesn't include some time derivative. That means we can allow any, actually, any time evolution. So we can allow some time evolution in this sense. Uh, so this time evolution is fixed. Actually, actually, I didn't mention, but time evolution is fixed by once we specify infrared boundary condition, like black hole or some star. Then, uh, and combining with that infrared boundary condition and solving this equation, that completely fixes the form of entanglement entropy. So this is not enough to, yeah, to include that information. Okay, so, and uh, I didn't mention about two-dimensional case. This is uh, just a technical point, but uh, this scalar field phi is, uh, conformal dimension is almost vanishing, and uh, this is not a nice uh, local operator. So instead, we can use this op exponential operator, exponential i alpha phi, which is the conformal dimension proportion to alpha square, or like this, this kind of cosine beta phi operator. But probably you can now uh, I mean, guess the result. And in this uh, result, it's very simple. So for this exponential operator, this is just direct product state because phi is decomposed in the left and right. This is really exact in 2D. So we have a really direct product state, and this entropy increment is zero, just zero for any n, but if we have cosine state, it's like uh, this kind of a plus plus and a minus minus appears, it's like really APR state, and we get log two for any n. But of course, we can consider more complicated state, then we might get some more complicated result, but just I don't know. So the summary of this excited state is like this. So we, first we, ex last lecture we explained some analog of first law of time dynamics, but the relation to time dynamics is not so much clear, it's a different limit, a small size limit of subsystem A, but in a large subsystem limit, and we, this linear entropy, our calculation shows that this somehow measures the degree of freedom, not of the theory. Usually, entanglement entropy measures the degree of freedom of the theory, like it includes some central charge and some related quantity, but this is actually degree of freedom of a local operator, rather than the theory itself. So how much this operator is complicated, this is measured by this quantity. So this might be interesting quantity, which is also going to other quantity characterized as operator like conformal dimension or charges and so on. And so we show this is monotonic time evolution, and we, we, this can be understood from the viewpoint of propagation of entangled pairs of the space particles. 
And in then this uh, final value of the increment of entropy is explained by this finite numbers, actually explained by quantum field theory includes the infinity number of states, but actually result is just explained by finite number of states, such as if there state or more complicated states. And it's there in invariant against smooth deformation of the subsystem. Okay, so the, these are all of my uh, talk about the excited state. So how much time? Uh, I just maybe quickly mention this uh, 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 topic of this entanglement innovation, but maybe we don't, maybe all this time. Yeah, 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 okay, yeah. Well, maybe yeah, yeah, up to some point, which I, I think shows the result. Okay, so I just finished the uh, application of this uh, entanglement entropy calculation in the photography or and also without photography, especially in that excited state. But now I would also like, would like to uh, some interesting connection between this. Um, Holography or a more, I mean, quantum entanglement in holography, and some scheme which called entanglement minimalization, which recently developed in condensed matter physics, and which shows that some another realization, another interpretation of holography from the viewpoint of some quantum manifold system. So, basically, the idea is that, I mean, one idea is like this. And we take some conformal field theory state and we can compute entanglement entropy, and which is an area of minimal surface, and we can reproduce the metric. If we, roughly speaking, we can, if we know all areas, we can reproduce the metric. So we can connect the metric and the CFT state. And we want to do this some framework. But the nice, one of nice framework is called, so this entanglement renormalization, or called it MERA. And this is first constructed by Vidal, who is a, a quantum information theorist. And this is pointed by this and in relation to this scheme and its uh, ADS CFT is first pointed to by Swingle uh, a few years ago. So let me first uh, explain what is the tensor network. This is just some application of quantum mechanics to quantum minimal systems. So recently there have been remarkable progresses in numerical algorithm for quantum lattice models, some numerical simulation of lattice models based on so called tensor product state. This leads to uh, various uh, nice variation around that for the ground state wave functions. Anyway, if we have some complicated Hamiltonian, we'd like to find some approximate ground state wave function. And th for that, we can use this variational principle of this quantum mechanics. But there are some nice way to find some nice answer to variation around uh, cal calculation. And then people find that this answer is nice if it, it respects the quantum entanglement structure of quantum ground state. So the explicit uh, construction is like, it's a quite graphical way, and this is a, just a graphical way to represent wave function. So we, we basic constituent is like this kind of vertex, three vertex, like we just call it, a, for example, we can call it a alpha, beta, sigma. Alpha, beta is an index of these two uh, legs, and the third leg so is just sigma. Sigma is actually spin. So the uh, most typical, one of the most important such state is called matrix product state. This is heavily used the uh, computer calculation of DMRG or to simulate some 1D quantum system. <coughs> so sigma is a spin, as it's a up spin or down spin. That's a, we are assuming one half spin, so this is a plus one half and this is minus one half. It's just two index. And alpha can be orbitary. We can just take one to chi. Chi is some, some number which we can just set by hand to do some numerical calculation. Just if we chi goes to infinity, we get the exact result, but we can just truncate the calculation so that we have finite chi to, to have realistic calculation. So we have some spin chain. Let's consider some spin chain. Spin is aligned here, and we want to find, we have some, uh, we have some Hamiltonian for this spin chain, but it's very complicated. May just assume it's not solvable. Then how can we find the ground state? And nice answer that is given here, so we have some uh, this diagrammatic picture. So the phi uh, sigma one is combined with some with red, and it's a three vertex here, and it's co again faced with each other along this line. So this is much like Feynman diagram. We just contract index is described by this diagram, like large and Feynman diagram. So uh, this state is exactly represented by this mathematical Edison state. So this is the n spin state, 
and this argument is here, and M is a, a matrix given by this. It's a matrix of which depends on sigma, but once we pick some spin, then this is a chi times chi matrix. This is a, this is a uh, index of matrix. matrix. So this chi times chi matrix and place as of such a multiple copies of this uh, matrix. And, uh, this is a coefficient of this spin state. We, once we fix this coefficient, then that means we specify the ground state. So we approximately write this coefficient by this matrix product. So this is a, a called matrix product. Of course, if we take chi goes to infinity, this gives the exact result because this coefficient takes orbitary value. But let's truncate with chi, and then we still get people notice that this leads to quite nice uh, approximation. But there is a rule about this uh, when we can you know, apply this method. This is a measured by entanglement. So this matrix product state, or this is a matrix product state, and this is a called, it's like tree. So tree, this is TT, three tensor network, very similar construction, just I just didn't mention so much. But they, immediately one noticed that from this diagram, it is very easy to estimate quantum amount of quantum entanglement. So we, let's assume this is a region A, subsystem A is like this, and we trace out the other part. Then what we do is just uh, count it the number of bonds. If we have one bond, we have a chi degree of freedom that produces log chi entropy. So in this case, we have this region, and the other part is only connected by these two bonds, two lines. So this gives a log chi. One of them is give log chi, and the other also log chi. So it's totally two log chi. So this is the maximum entanglement allowed. We assume this uh, matrix product construction. So uh, as I told you, so if we keep chi finance for realistic calculations, the maximum amount of entanglement entropy is given by this. But this is a, uh, for gap theory, this is good. But for conformal field theory or quantum critical point, this is not something good because we know that in conformal field theory, this entanglement entropy, as this I already explained, but uh, it's like log, log L, log L. I will just write it log, over, log L over A, which is cut off, but uh, we can just define this L. L is just number of lattice size. So it's log L, and if we assume L is very, very large, then this can get much larger than this log chi once we fix this chi. So in that sense, anyway, so this is not, not something theoretically favored uh, uh, way to do some approximate the ground state. We need some other formalism which looks some more beautiful for, and beautifully fit nicely with this conformal field theory. But anyway, what we learned here, so this entanglement entropy is roughly estimated by the number of intersecting bonds. We have some, re, some subsystem A and just we write this surround by some curve, then number of bonds. And it, for example, if we choose this different way or more complicated way, we can increase the number of intersections. But uh, that is uh, just overcounting the result, and we have to minimize allowed, uh, about this allowed intersection number of this. Yeah? Log chi? Log chi is a, uh, okay, so it's like, uh, anyway, we have some one line which has an index, right? We have uh, some index here. So we have some index, which takes a, a, a we have called alpha equal one to chi, right? And that means total density matrix looks like this. Something like that. So this state corresponds to this state, and the other point, this point, for example. Well, maybe I just diag diagonalize it. And once we fix this, then this is a maximally entangled state, and the maximum amount is log chi. So this is a maximum amount of the center of between this region. Ah, sorry, uh, how many spin? Uh, so ah, what uh, is the, I mean, I, I want to compute it for a many scale field. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, 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 this is an error. Yeah, this is an error. It's okay. <laughs> exactly, exactly, exactly. So that's the reason this is not good for conformal field theory. But if we are talking about gap theory, that is fine because this formula is modified into this correlation lengths. If gap theory, this is not error, but it's correlation lengths, that's just finite, finite quantity. And that fits nicely with this picture. Any question? Any other question?
So now we'd like to find some another formalism which fits nicely with this conformal field theory. So this is actually called MERA. This is MERA means multi-scale entanglement renormalization ansatz and first found by this bizarre construction. This is an efficient variational ansatz for CFT ground state. And the, the way to construct this MERA is like this. So we have some three tensor network like this. So we have sigma one, sigma two, sigma three, sigma four, and so on. And we combine. So this is a cross-graining procedure, like renormalization group. So we combine these two spins into one, and two spins into one. And again, we combine four spins into one, and in the end, we just reduce to one spin. But this has a problem, again, similar problem that if we measure this entanglement entropy, we just cut it two points. Even if this region grows very fast, but still number of the cuts is very small, that means this is not a good situation. So if we have a, if we combine this region A, but intersect with just one point, in this case we just have one bone, which is very small entanglement. To avoid this problem, we we need of course not add to a lot of entanglement, but then to, to for example to uh, follow this uh, scale invariant we need to uh, nicely put this entanglement bond. So this is a mirror, idea of mirror, and we put the bond like this way. So we put the bond in first in each uh, one level, we pick up one level, first level, and we put, periodically we put uh, this entanglement bond. This entangling bond means that if we have uh, this spin comes in, then we have non-trivial S matrix active uh, on this, and we have another, uh, this two comes out. This S matrix, unitary transformation. So we, we take this spin here, but space, so we do this unitary transformation, mix them, and we get this one. Cost graining, we reduce the dimension of here, but space by some projection. So projection doesn't lead to any entanglement, but we do this entangling, entanglers. This is called entangler, or in this way, it's a reduced entanglement. In this way, it's reduced entanglement, so it's called disentangler, but maybe it's easier to say it's this, just entangler. It increases entanglement. We add this bond. And the next stage, we also again add the bone. And we, we just repeat this until we reach the, this a single state. So this looks like some nice structure. It looks like scale invariant. <coughs> so the claim, uh, so, sorry, uh, and also I would like to mention this uh, uh, analysis of entropy, entanglement entropy. Previously, we had a problem. So now we would like to say this is the result. So now we have this picture. This is a 1D spin chain, again, 1D conformal field theory. And this is uh, some cost graining scale. Just uh, for my uh, definition, we just call first stage is u equals 0, and second stage u equals minus 1, and the second, uh, and u minus 2, and 3, and 4. Just we define this way. And then we are talking about this uh, spin. There are four spin here. I didn't write the sigma, but there is a four spin here. And we call this is a, a subsystem A, and we trace out the other part. So then what happens? Then we need to count the number of bones. So we surround this whole spin by some curve and number, count number of bones. And then we can easily see that the minimum number of bones is actually like this. Just cover this, this hat with four spins and the counting number of these red bones. And this is a, some, we start with the N spins and the second stage we have N over two spins. And that way, so this uh, tip is like log L. So we have log L stage until we reach this point. So we have this number of this entanglement bonds is like log L, and this <coughs> nicely agree with 2D conformal field theory, as which I did before today. So this is a quite nice uh, formalism, which fits nicely with the upper series. Yeah, 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 right, 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 of course. Ah. Uh, so this, uh, I mean, of course, it depends on how we define this entangling, this unitary transformation. And this unitary uh, transformation determined by minimizing energy. It's a variational principle. And then we find some one single unique answer to this form. And by using that, actually, we have to compute this. So here, we just pretend that this is maximally entangled, actually. That means this is just approximation. But this is in strongly couple cells, that is almost very close to the answer. Uh, I'm not assuming matrix product. Uh, it's a more general uh, variational answer. 
Yes, it's very complicated. We have to contract the index here and the index here. It's very horrible shape if we write it expressly on the black hole. But for this picture, it's easy to write it. Yeah. So this is a quite new, uh, different others to work with. So as a conjectural relation, so now maybe I, I should stop here. Yeah, is it? Oh, really? Ah, yeah. Oh, okay. Ah, thank you very much. Yeah, just a little bit I am going. But essentially, what I'd like to tell you is almost done here. Yeah. Okay, so the conjecture relationship, this meta, this entanglement in normalization, is actually uh, to uh, ADSPFT is like, like this way. So just uh, it says that, for example, this, we look at this picture and just say this is uh, the anti Doshita state. But uh, time direction, we omit, let's omit time direction. Like, for example, ADS3, we take ADS3 and we omit time direction, then we have a hyperbolic two dimensional space. And the claim is that this is exactly the same as hyperbolic two dimensional space. It's some, some sort of discretization of that. Sorry, sorry, y direction? This direction? Uh, that, this is uh, an uh, extra dimension of anti Doshita space. Yeah, I, I'll come, come back. But, uh, yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. So we, yeah, exactly, so that's a good, yeah. So we start with this single uh, spin chain, but we do some, we can just uh, think about this kind of post graining procedure, but with real entanglement. And then this extra dimension appears naturally. Yeah, yeah okay, that's good for, yeah, I will come back to that issue, yeah. We have some proposal about it, yeah, okay. But anyway, so the, in higher dimension, we have a little more structure, but essentially the same. So we have this, this uh, each seed, this is a course of starting spin system, our quantum minimal system. We coarse grain it, and uh, first, and second, and third, and so on. And uh, basically what we do is uh, that count the number of bonds. This is uh, an estimation of this entanglement entity. And the counting number of bonds, that means we have count the number of bonds, the first seed, second seed, and up to some seed, which is related to by this distance, or the size of the subsystem A. So this procedure is quite, uh, I mean, Quite similar to the calculation of this entanglement entropy. We pick up some a, uh, area of minimal surface, and as I mentioned, that we, in the especially historical argument of black hole entropy, we expect that one Planck unit have a one bit. And we can, you know, that means one, we have one Planck unit of area, and there is a, indeed one entangling bond in this picture. It uh, fits nicely well with that. Also, this minimization also have this one. Uh, agree with between them. So mi we need to minimize the area to find holographic entanglement entropy. But in uh, this uh, meta picture, we need to minimize this number of bonds to get uh, some optimized result. Otherwise, we overcome this entropy. So that way, it uh, looks, uh, of course, we don't, uh, I mean, we don't get into account of qualitative uh, agreement, but just qualitatively looks similar. And this is uh, our original motivation for why this uh, single proposal relationship between Mera and the anti Doshita space, ADSPFT. And if we look at the metric, for example, the, in the just let's work on just pure ADS, then the, this we have Poincare metric, and we write, re, easily rewrite this way. And this U is defined by Z, this extra dimension Z is A times exponential minus U. A is a cutoff scale, distance, this lattice spacing. And this U is uh, exactly this coordinate U, which I called here. So U equals zero is a UB. So Z equals A is very, very small. A is a very small quantity. And it goes to minus infinity to Z goes to large, very large, and it goes to infrared, this region. region. So this is a, a I mean, basic correspondence which is argued uh, in this context. So, but uh, of course we want to, this is a quite discretized picture. So we want to put this in a continuum theory, like quantum field theory. So then, we can use the another formulation, but of course motivated by this mirror, it's called the continuous mirror, worked out of the first by this uh, people, these people. And this idea is just the same, but just do everything in a continuous way. And this, we start with the state, which we called here, we, we said this here. But actually, we did, did just one trick that uh, uh, just summarized here. Quantum field theory, we don't want to change the, the heat, Dimension of Hilbert space. See, it's just one dimension, just one spin and two spin. This is not something we want in con uh, continuous uh, quantum field theory. 
So what we do is like this. We have like this kind of uh, mirror structure, but we add for oh, this coarse grading, but we add some dummy vector just to stay in a, some particular this in the speed system, just one state. We just take some dummy state, and in the end we so we have two, two dummy state. Then in the end we end up with uh, just uh, always up spin. That means there are no entanglement, completely disentangled state. And we start with some spin chain which is highly entangled, but in the end we end up with very high, uh, just uh, uh, unentangled state. And we just want to take this continuum limit of this. Then total Hilbert space for in total Hilbert space dimension for each stage is uh, remain the same. For spin, for spin, for spin. So this is a thing we for this continuous version. And this uh, adding this, uh, uh, these uh, entangling bonds, entangler, and so on is written by this operator k for each stage. S is uh, just integral in this direction. And L is a uh, coarse graining, this coarse graining behavior. And so natural conjecture is that this gives precisely this ADS PFT because we take some continuous limit. So then I'd like to just come back to the question of how to Compute metric and just to finish, would like to finish my uh, lecture. So this is the emergent metric, how to compute this. And so for that, um, we'd like to uh, look at some information theoretic metric. This is some motivation, but we would like to look at some information metric so that it measures the amount of this entanglement. So if we, uh, so in summary, what we would like to say, uh, propose is that this kind of identification. So this GUU is, uh, okay, I didn't write it. So GUU is defined like this. So U is a, a coarse graining of the system, and we have GUU metric like this, and we have some, always we just, uh, each state we have a coarse graining, which is, looks like to U, to U and uh, epsilon square, uh, A square, in our language, it is the X, Direction. This is a transverse direction, just a Minkowski transverse direction, and we have some time metric, time direction. So if this is just one and one, this, uh, sorry, if this is a, a, a yeah, so GTT, DT square, if GTT is the same as this one, and GUU is one, this is just one carry ADS metric. And but the, the basic thing we want to do, assume some simplest case where we have a translational invariance and compute this GUU for non-trivial quantum <coughs> And our answer is like, assumption is like this. This is our proposal. This GUU can be computable by looking at this quantity. So this Psi U, Psi U is just a wave function of total system at the cost grain with scale U. So we start with the UB state. UB state is Psi, this original wave function is Psi zero and we coarse grain a little bit, and then we have psi u. So this is a, uh, this uh, entanglement renormalization is a coarse graining or a uh, renormalization group flow of uh, state, not uh, of the effective action like Wilsonian approach. So this we coarse grain the, the state. And uh, basically we do this, and we just compute the distance, quantum information theoretic distance between two different states. So the reason why we look at this quantity is just simply it's like this, so we have some, maybe we should start with many copies, and we have some disentanglers like this. And what we'd like to do is to count the number of these disentanglers, because if we compute this entanglement entropy and A and B, then basically we sum over each bond, number of bonds. And so the number of bonds is actually related to this entanglement entropy. And as we, we know, this is a related to area. So area is, of course, related to metric. In that sense, the counting number of bonds is related to the metric of the theory. And indeed, this GUU is, U is this direction, so uh, this, this direction. So we integrate over this direction metric. We, we take GUU and GU to get some entropy, entanglement entropy for 1D system. So indeed, so this, this correspondence. And the, what we do, would like to do is to count the number of these bonds and then we do, what we do is like this. We just take this state and this state. We, we choose these two different states, which like 
psi u and this is like psi a u plus d u, slightly u is changing. And compare them and compute the distance and the computation of distance is well known in quantum, phys uh, quantum information theory and given by, uh, sorry, now I just want to switch back, given by this a so called, yeah, this is a very simple expression, but this is called something called breadth metric. Basically, we compute, and, but we put uh, some extra factor. This just there's uh, um, this effect of coarse grain. We just don't want to include this effect. We don't want to compare this state with this state, but we compare between this state and this state. So that's the reason we just put this factor, and uh, we can have some this proposal of the dual metric from just purely from the viewpoint of conformity theory or some quantum field theory. So breast distance is like this, just we have take two different pure state, just to wave a quantum state and just define this way. Just exactly what we see this, and just we take this one. And this has a nice property and called the Fisher information metric. And anyway, so by using that, for example, we can, so I am now running with time, just uh, I mentioned that if we, for example, consider some free field theory, and uh, we first define this unentangled, entangled state just defined by this this way. Omega is a, not vacuum, but unentangled state. Unentangled state means it's really analyzed, uh, annihilated by annihilation operator at each point. So if we satisfy this, it's a just uh, <coughs> pro, uh, just a test a product of vacuum state for each side. So we approximate each side some harmonic oscillator lives on the each each point and we just cop take copy of this vacuum state and there are no entanglement, real space entanglement between these states. This is highly, this is not, this is totally different from vacuum state in a standard vacuum state defined by this A, K, K is the momentum, and I can create operator of K. And then, for example, we can explicitly compute this uh, so-called disentangler, which is uh, written here. This is a free field theory, we can have some exact formula, Gaussian level, at Gaussian level, and uh, we have some eta, basically K is just A daga, A daga, it's Gaussian, this creation operator, it's just, and the coefficient is important because this introduces some non-trivial entanglement between these two different points, and this chi u is measures the uh, strength of entanglement bone, which we put here. So this chi u in the end turns out to be the metric of G u u, it's chi u square appears. This is a final, Result is not different from previous formula. In that sense, it's this entangling procedure gives, and this is a very uh, this is a free field model. So its result is very uh, really toy model, and it's uh, we have to worry about quantum correction, but just qualitative uh, behavior works well. Okay. Ku is a ah, so Ku is a function defined in front of this uh, this entangler. And the chi u is a fixed expression. Uh, conform of your theory, this chi u is just constant. Uh, just constant, but in massive, massive scale of your theory, we have this non-trivial functional shape. And basically, it measures how much entangling bond we put here at each point. Some, how much we put this entangling bond at each step. Uh, Yeah, 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 right, right. So, so yeah, just, uh, I, I just wanted to come exactly that. Uh, so this is my final transparency. So we, we compute this GUU here, and uh, indeed, as uh, Sandeep says, that if we talk of massive scalar fields, this GUU turns out to be constant, and this constant means that, this constant means that the state is really pure state, uh, sorry, pure ADS, that space time is pure ADS. And uh, if we take a Lipschitz theory, it's a non relativistic scale, but still it's constant, and I agree with uh, some proposed gravity dual of Lipschitz background. But in the end, we also try this massive scalar field. It's non-trivial. And then we have this kind of metric. It's not exactly what we find in supergravity solution, like ADS, solution, ADS soliton or something. But it shows that space-time disappears at z equal m. So this shows that if we do some Cornell transformation. Then this z, which is defined by this extra, uh, extra dimension metric, z is like at z equals zero, this becomes zero, and space disappears. That means some capped off geometry. So that uh, qualitative level, this somehow agree with what we expect. Yeah, so these are, uh, I mean, some idea how to construct the metric. But there are, as obviously, there are lots of things we have to work more. And we assume some translate invariant 
understand and so we in Z we want to remove this and there are many things and maybe we want we want to de derive Einstein equation from this kind of analysis and it's a very ambitious goal and there are many issues which we, we have to face. But I think I, I will stop here. Thank you very much. So here you showed for uh, entanglement entropy how to construct maybe geometry. So uh, here you said you have, so if I suppose, is there something for Rainy entropy, uh, why I'm asking you, is there some more information in Rainy entropy to construct, I mean, than the entanglement entropy? Ah, okay, that, that's a very good question, but uh, I mean, as long as we see some Einstein, I, I mean, Einstein gravity, we just need the information metric. For that, I think it's, uh, uh, probably entanglement entropy is enough because uh, entanglement entropy for any shape, right, has a, quite a lot of information. That it, it involves uh, any part of the metric, and probably that is enough for uh, this classical gravity limit. But I'm not sure about, for example, quantum. You know, if we have some quantum corrections like one over n effect and so on, that's uh, my. Uh, but I didn't uh, so much seriously think about it. Maybe there are some interesting corrections to that. Anything else? Like in the first part of your today's talk, you described this uh, entanglement entropy calculation or any entropy calculation for the field from the field theory side, where yeah, it's yeah. The, for the excited states. Yes, yes, yes. So, uh, like, uh, I mean, if I have a situation where I know the non-trivial IR geometry. Yes. And that smoothly matches off to ADS five in boundary. So I, yeah, I mean, in 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 principle, I know the f like the excited state in the field theory. Like if I have a black hole or something, I know that this is a thermal state. So in that case, this computation of yours can it be verified from a holographic calculation? Ah, uh, yeah, but calculation down for free field theory, and that means the free field theory is this decomposition left and right is clear. And also, this quasi-particle uh, description is very nice, uh, very correct. And, and the, uh, indeed, the quasi-particle prescription we use because we are talking about this entangling pair propagating. But in strongly coupled theory, like ADS-CFT, it might be that this quasi-particle somehow has an unusual property, or maybe it's there from there, without can. I think. So that, that this change is quite interesting. Like, you, you use some operator O, right, 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 yeah. which, so which excites the ground state. Yeah, 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 so yeah. I can consider some other operator, may not be a simple free scalar, scalar uh, field, but. Yeah, so even for, if we take this operator, maybe if we have a strongly coupled, uh, I mean, theory, then this co operator just uh, decreases one degree of freedom. One just, uh, this re just relies in terms of just one creation operator of some composite particle. Then result totally changes. Actually, result is become the same as K equal one. Instead, even though we k equal two and three, so that will still happen. It can happen in ADS. So that, I think that's quite interesting direction. But uh, so the difference is actually interesting. I see. Um, Thank you. Yes. 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 Summer set. Yes. Ah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Actually, actually, that's what uh, I, if I have time, I wanted to talk about. It. Actually, there is a slide, but it's a bit complicated. Um, thermal state, actually, um, yeah, like this kind of entangled state, like uh, as in uh, this Sugura talk and uh, Gotham talk, and uh, so this state can be actually uh, this mirror setup, but actually uh, this time direction. It, we seem to naturally, we seem to choose this way. So we have some like this. So we have this kind of eternal black hole. And uh, usually we take this time slice. But uh, if we take this different time slice like this way, then we have some non trivial time evolution. It's some sort of looks like growing black hole horizon. 
And that distribution can be actually done in uh, using this simera, continuous simera. And the idea is that first we construct, anyway, the problem of mixed state, we don't know how to compute, construct this infrared state. Infrared, if this is pure state, we can define this, uh, I mean, this tower, so this is a tower of this mirror, so we have this tower, and we want to first start with this state, this un totally unentangled state, so which we call it omega, and this is just defined by this for pure state. But the mixed state, we don't know how to describe this state. It's rather some low omega, which is very mixed density matrix. So we don't know how to construct this. So we constructed this finite temperature mirror, first looking at so-called quantum quench. Actually, this is equivalent to the setup, single-sided black hole, which is just the orbifold, this orbifold of this eternal black hole. This is just a boundary. This is a boundary. So this recently, this is claimed by Hatoma and Madasena. This is described this uh, quantum quench state is given by just this. So this boundary state, this actually gives boundary. So this is a CFT boundary state acted by this uh, regularization factor by Hamiltonian. Essentially gives quantum quench. Quantum quench is some uh, system with some sudden change of this parameter, like mass parameter. We take some mass parameter non-vanishing to zero at t equals zero. And then we have excited state in massless theory, conformative theory. So this kind of state approximately described by uh, this uh, boundary state with some regularization factor. Beta is the uh, effective temperature in Zen, what we expect. And this state is very close to this eternal black hole. So first we construct a mirror for this state, and then we double the state by looking at the analogy between these two guys. So this is a, so I didn't, sorry, I didn't, but this is something familiar for me already. So this is a entangled state between two different CFTs, and we can rely this in terms of a dagger, which is a free field theory, free scalar field theory, a dagger tilde, a. And this is a, a entangled state in a final temperature CFT, in some field double description. But this is actually very similar to the structure of boundary state. If we write the boundary state, it's just a dagger, a dagger. And they are same, same bosom, but it's one is left and one, another one is right. Only. And this is exactly analogy is exactly dual to this cutting half procedure. We just cut it half, we just identify it's A tilde with A, and we just have a boundary state. So by using this analogy, we can first we first first we compute this uh, mirror, C mirror, construct mirror in this setup. This is just pure state we can do, and double it, and then we find C mirror for black hole. So I mean, met, met, for example, metric. So we, but for that, I mean, natural time coordinate is like this, like this. So it's a non-trivial time evolution like this. This is a metric. We plot the metric of this extra dimension, it's like propagate at the speed of light. It's like gravity, even though we are just looking at the field theory. And we can uh, easily re recover a well uh, known fact that the entanglement entropy is linearly growing about time. So, yeah. Anything else? We, of course, have the discussion session following this. Okay, since uh, it is uh, Professor Takenagi's last lecture, now I hand it up over to Sandeep. First of all, let's thank uh, Tadashi once more. <laughs> I, I request uh, Professor Ashok Sen to please come and on our behalf uh, give this uh, small memento of the Konark wheel, uh, which uh, actually Tadashi did not see. Uh, actually, but previously <laughs> I Oh, previously <laughs> he sees, okay. Anyway, to take with him. Thank you very much. Thank you.